Today in the workshop, we are working with LiPo batteries. We'll see how LiPos work and we'll learn how to charge, discharge, balance, and safely store these incredible power sources. We'll also learn how to dispose of LiPos and how to extinguish a LiPo fire. It's a powerful episode today, so welcome to the workshop. Well, hello and welcome to the workshop and to a bit of a different episode of the DroneBot workshop. Different in the sense that we aren't going to be using any microcontrollers or microcomputers. There's no wiring involved. There's no coding involved. Today, we're going to be looking at batteries. Now, I know you're probably thinking that batteries aren't really that exciting a topic, but LiPo batteries are actually one of the greatest technical advances in the last 20 years. And they've made possible all sorts of devices, everything from mobile phones to quadcopters, depend upon these batteries because of their incredible power to weight ratio. Now LiPo batteries are rechargeable batteries that have very stringent requirements for charging and discharging and storage. And if you don't obey those requirements, you'll severely reduce the life of your battery and you could in some cases even cause a deadly LiPo fire. And We certainly don't want that. However, when used properly, Properly, these batteries are perfectly safe and they can last for a very long time. So let's begin by taking a look at this incredible battery technology. Today we are working with lithium ion polymer batteries or LiPos. LiPos refer to rechargeable batteries that use lithium ion technology. These batteries use a gel polymer instead of a liquid electrolyte as found in other lithium cells. LiPos provide a higher specific energy or energy unit per mass than other lithium-based battery technologies. They're used where weight is critical. Applications for LiPos include mobile devices, radio-controlled aircraft, robotics, and some electric vehicles. Lithium batteries depend upon the reversible storage of ions, a technique pioneered in the late 1970s. The first lithium ion cell was developed at Oxford University in 1980. Sony produced the first commercial lithium ion batteries for their camcorders in 1991. In 1999, Ericsson produced the first LiPo batteries for use in their telephones. A LiPo battery is made up of an anode, cathode, and separator. It is filled with an electrolyte and has two current collectors, positive and negative. The anode and cathode store the positively charged lithium ions. While the battery is discharging and providing an electric current, the anode releases lithium ions to the cathode, generating a flow of electrons from one side to the other. When the battery is charging, the opposite happens. Lithium ions are released by the cathode and received by the anode. As with any battery, a LiPo battery consists of one or more cells. Each cell has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts. The nominal voltage is the default or resting voltage of the cell. The fully charged cell voltage is 4.4 volts. The minimum safe charge voltage is 3 volts. Within the battery, the cells are combined in series. The number of cells in the battery is the battery's S rating. A 2S battery has two cells, therefore it has a 7.4 volt nominal output. A 3S battery has three cells for an 11.1 volt nominal output. The cells can also be wired in parallel. The P rating is applied to cells that have parallel cell banks. The configuration illustrated here is the 2S2P configuration, two cells in series and two parallel banks, and has a total of 7.4 volts. This configuration is no longer very common as improved performance in individual cells make parallel cells unnecessary. The battery capacity of a LiPo battery is measured in milliamp hours. 
The discharge rating or C rating of the battery can be multiplied by the battery capacity to determine the maximum amount of current that you can safely draw from the battery. Another way of interpreting the C rating is that it specifies how quickly the battery can be discharged. The maximum charge rate is also specified as a C rating. Multiply this by the maximum capacity of the battery and you can determine the maximum charge current that you can apply safely to the battery. The specifications of a LiPo battery can be found on its label. You'll find the discharge rating, the capacity, the cell count, and the nominal output voltage. On some batteries you'll also find the charge rate, but this is not always specified on all LiPo batteries. Another very important rating is the internal resistance, or IR. This is measured in milliohms. The internal resistance is a measurement of the efficiency of the cell. This value will change over time and with temperature, and is not generally specified on the battery specs. The internal resistance increases with the battery's age, and eventually when it becomes too high, the battery will not be capable of delivering its specified current. You can't measure internal resistance with an ohmmeter, it requires specialized test equipment. Some advanced LiPo chargers can measure the total internal resistance. The total internal resistance is the total of all of the individual cells. You'll find another connector on a LiPo battery as well. This is the balance connector. This provides a connection to each cell in the battery. This can be used to balance the voltages between the cells. It can also be used for monitoring and during the charging process. The power output of LiPo batteries uses a number of different connectors. The Deans connector is probably the most popular LiPo connector. It's used in model airplane and quadcopters, as well as RC vehicles. XT60 connectors are becoming very popular, and they are easy to solder than Deans connectors. There are also larger XT90 and smaller XT30 connectors that have the same style. The EC3 connector was made for Horizon Hobby and is very popular for RC aircraft. Traxxas connectors are very popular with RC cars and trucks, and they're very easy to assemble. Anderson power poles are an older style of connector and were originally designed for ham radio applications. They're not used too often these days due to their size. Tamiya connectors are essentially Molex connectors, and they're not used much anymore as they have very poor performance. The most popular type of balance connector is the JST-XH plug, which we've seen in several different electronic applications. Some LiPo batteries also use the Thunder Power or TP plug for their balance connector. So now that we know the basics of how LiPo batteries work, it's time to take a look at a few of them and start working with them. Now here are a couple of LiPos that I'm going to be using in a project that I'm building, so I wanted to show them to you. They are slightly different, although as you see they are approximately the same size. Now this first one over here is a two-cell LiPo battery, and not sure if you can read the writing on there, but it says 2S, that indicates it's two cells, 7.4 volts, which is what a two-cell battery will give when it's fully charged, and 70C, which indicates that it can be discharged charge at a rate of 70 times its milliamp hour rating which is 5100 milliamp hours or 5.1 amperes. Now on the battery you'll see two connections that are coming out and this is the actual power connection is going to what's called an XT60 connector and this connection over here is for balancing and monitoring the individual cells and so there are three pins on this and that is a common pin plus the two cells. Now now this battery also is encased in a plastic shell, so it's a bit more durable. And right now it is in perfectly good shape, so the shell is very nice. If this battery started to expand, the shell would start to crack on the side over here, and that would be an indication that we could no longer use it. Now this one over here is a similar battery, except this is a three-cell battery. And this one isn't in a hard shell. This is a soft shell one, so you can actually see the three different 
different cells over here. Uh, it's again uh, rated at 11.1 .1 volts because we've got three cells and 5200 milliamp hours so it's a very similar rating here. This is rated at 50 C so I could draw current from this at 50 times that although in my application I'm not going to come anywhere near that. And again it's got the same type of connector the XT60 of course you can get batteries with different connectors like the Dean's plug and it also has one for monitoring you'll notice it has three uh, has an extra wire it's got four wires and this one is three you can tell the number of cells basically by the number of wires over here because it's the number of wires minus one and those are used to monitor the internal cells and these are batteries as I said that I'm going to be using in a project that I'm working on right now now here are a couple of accessories that you can use when working with LiPo batteries and some of these are very useful to have. Now the first one is a capacity controller. It's basically a multimeter but it's a lot easier to use than a multimeter and it's set up for a number of different types of batteries not just LiPos. And what you do with this device is you connect it over to the charging monitor and it'll give you the total voltage here and you can step through the individual cells and you can see what the voltage of the cells are. Now this battery is currently in storage mode so the cells are at 3.8 volts and it's only sitting at one-third capacity right now. Now this is very useful to have out in the field because as I said it's a lot easier to use than having to try to use a multimeter to do all of this and they're very inexpensive. I'd highly recommend you get one. Now another device that's along the same lines is this one over here and there's going to be a sound when I connect this up. This is meant to be used inside your model and you will mount this in the model so that you can monitor the voltage while it's running and as you can see it cycles through all the different uh, cells right now. It's not quite as accurate as the other device but it's accurate enough. But what's useful about it is that beeping sound that you heard. That's an alarm that's going to get triggered if an individual cell voltage drops below 3.6 volts and that's very important. You don't want to run the cell any lower than that it's time to take the battery out and change it or balance it and so by putting this inside your model you'll get a very loud sound there's actually two alarm sounders on here and that will let you know that it's time to do something about your battery now when working with things like this uh, these can be useful these are extension cables that basically just extend the cell monitor out and it can be useful inside your model when you're trying to mount a device like this a little bit further away from the from the battery. It can also be useful during the charging process as well if you've got your battery sitting inside some protected area uh, you could extend the leads with something like these and these are very inexpensive as, as you can see they come in different sizes. I've got everything from the 2S to 6S over here right now. Now this is a very handy device when you're first setting up your uh, project with a LiPo battery. Uh, as you can see from the back it just has an input and an output. It goes this way as well because it's got both the XT60 and XT30 connectors and you can get these devices with Dean's plugs or other battery plugs as well. What this is is a very fast acting fuse and it's not meant to be permanently mounted in your model. Instead when you first put everything together you would use this just to ensure that you don't have a dead short because a dead short across a LiPo battery is not something that you want to experience and uh, if you do have a short the fast acting fuse will blow and you will be alerted to the problem and you can go and troubleshoot it. So I'd highly recommend you use one of these when first powering up with a LiPo. This is just a simple voltage tap. It allows you to take a low current output from your battery and send it to a couple of DuPont pins and it's a lot easier than soldering everything up. And a lot of these devices uh, like this and the other two I'm about to show you are things you could build yourself but because you can buy them already soldered up and sealed up and everything uh, it's quite useful. Uh, this is another device like that and this just splits the battery output into two different outputs which can be very useful and this one over here does the opposite. It allows you to connect two batteries in parallel. Now if you're going to do that you need to be very careful. Personally I try to avoid that but you can do it. You just have to make certain that both batteries 
are at the same level of charge. You want to avoid a situation where one battery tries to charge the other battery. And if you're careful, you can indeed run LiPos in parallel. And so there you go, a few accessories you can use when working with LiPo batteries. So now that we understand the technology and specifications of LiPo batteries, it's time to charge one up. Now LiPo chargers, as you might expect, have to be specifically made for LiPo batteries. And there are a wide variety of these types of chargers to choose from. Some of them are powered from AC power, and some of them are powered from DC power, such as a car or truck battery, so that they can be used out in the field. So let's go and take a look at what it takes to charge a LiPo battery. The requirements for charging LiPo batteries are pretty strict. LiPos must be charged with the LiPo-specific battery charger. If you're using a multi-use charger, it must be set to lithium polymer. Balanced charging, or charging through the balancing leads, is the preferred method of charging a LiPo battery. When charging a LiPo, your charger needs to be set to the correct number of cells in the battery. Most modern chargers will detect this automatically, but some of them don't always do it correctly. So you need to verify indeed that your charger has been set to the same S number as your battery. When charging a LiPo, you need to charge the cells to a maximum of 4.2 volts per cell. Never exceed that voltage. The primary concern with charging LiPo batteries is safety. Always check the connections before starting the charge. Ideally, you should charge LiPo batteries outdoors. If you need to do it indoors, do it in a well-ventilated area. Never charge a LiPo battery inside the device that you're powering. Always remove the battery and charge it independently. Make sure that you put the battery onto a non-flammable surface when you're charging it. Never ever charge a battery that has been damaged or that has ballooned. It can start a LiPo fire. Absolutely never short circuit the output connector of a LiPo battery during charging or at any time during its use. Always have a fire extinguisher nearby when you're charging a LiPo battery. And the most important safety tip is to never leave a charged LiPo unattended, not even for a second. Always have someone nearby when charging a LiPo and keep pets and children away from charging LiPo batteries. The safest charging current is 1C, in other words, the same rating as the milliamp hours of the battery. Don't exceed 1.5C, even if the battery is rated for a higher rate, as this is dangerous. The lifetime of your LiPo battery will be greatly extended if you break it in first, with 5 to 8 charge and discharge cycles before using it. Never allow a LiPo battery to discharge below 3 volts per cell, and never charge it above 4.2 volts. During the charging process, watch your LiPo battery for any swelling, and if this is observed, stop charging immediately. Although it is possible to direct charge a LiPo battery, in other words, using its output leads, this is not recommended. And so now let's go and charge up some LiPo batteries. Alright, so I'm all set up to charge a LiPo battery. Now normally I would do this outside, but I'm going to very carefully do this indoors for the sake of this demonstration as it's a bit easier to film it indoors. Now, as you will notice, I have a charger over here, and this charger plugs directly into the AC. A lot of LiPo chargers require a 12 volt input, and you can either use a car battery or you can use a power supply on your workbench. But this one actually has a built in AC power supply, it's got a fan and everything in it to keep it cool, and it can simultaneously do two LiPo batteries. Now, you'll notice I have a bag over here. This is a LiPo bag, and I'll be showing you some more LiPo bags a little later on in the video. I have a battery inside here. It's a three cell battery and I've got both the battery's output and its monitor leads connected to the charger over here. You'll notice another thing I've got over here is of course a fire extinguisher. I don't anticipate a fire but you want to be very careful whenever you're charging or discharging LiPo batteries. You could always have a fire extinguisher or a bucket of sand or some way that you could put out a fire of 
available to you. You'll also notice the surface that I'm charging it on, and this round surface actually is a pizza stone. One little known fact is that when I'm not in the workshop, I love to cook, and so this stone has made hundreds of delicious pizzas, but it's been replaced by another stone, and it now has a second lease on life as a safe surface to charge LiPo batteries on. And so I'm all set up with my charger over here, and right now it's detected the fact that I've got a three cell battery, and it says it's giving out 11.4 volts, and the cells are ranging 3.8 to 3.8 volts. If I press this button, I get a few more details, and I can indeed see that cells one, two, and three are sitting at 3.8 volts, which is the storage voltage. And so if I hold this down for a while, I'll get a menu over here, and I've got a number of tasks that I can do over here. If I just move this wheel up to the top here, I have charge over here, but I can also discharge or do storage, and even destroy the battery, which basically bleeds it down to nothing so I can throw it away. I want to do a charge, so we'll keep that set over here. It knows the chemistry is a lipo. It wants to set the cells to 4.2 volts a piece, and that's what I want, but I can go into the menu and adjust that by very small increments if I wish. It knows it's a three cell battery because it detected that and it can have the current set. You can go into here and set what current you want. I'm going to charge at a level of four amperes. Now you determine the current by looking at the battery's rating. You take a look at its C rating and its total amperage rating and you multiply that and that is the maximum current you can go at. So I could actually go all the way to 12 amps with this but I'm going to go to four amps with this battery over here. I find that's a good current to charge at. And then down over here, I can just start it. And we're on the go right now, and it's monitoring it right now. Now, with this uh, particular charger, the uh, display over here will be orange while it is in the charging process. When it is finished charging, it will turn green, but it will continue to charge until the batteries are balanced, in which point it can turn blue. If you're in a hurry, you can remove it when it's green, but otherwise you can wait until it turns blue. And while it's charging, you can go in and get a bit more information about where all the cells are sitting and how much current you're passing through, etc. And so this is going to take a little while, so we're just going to let it charge and complete the charging and balancing process. Okay, if you can take a look at this, we are very close to the end of our charging cycle now. We've been running for all about 49 minutes. We're at 99%. We stay at 99% for a long time, but uh, the battery voltage is up to 12.6 volts. It also is telling us that the cells are getting balanced out at about 4.2 volts. I can hit over here for a bit more information on that. It's also giving us a milliamp hour rating on the battery. And so any moment now we should be turning green, but as I said, it stays at the 99% mark for quite some time. And there we go, we've now got green over here, so that indicates that we are charged. And if we wanted to, we could take the battery and disconnect it and go and use it right now, but it is still performing a function where it balances all of the cells. It tries to get all of the cell voltages to exactly the same voltage, to exactly 4.2 volts in this case. So we have to leave this a little while longer, and when it finishes that, the display will turn blue, and then we are done. And there we go. It's beeping to let us know we're done, and the display has turned blue, and we have successfully charged up this LiPo battery. So now that we've charged up our LiPo battery, we can put it to use. But even while we're putting it to use and discharging it, there's another thing we need to take into consideration, and that is balancing the battery. Balancing is simply the act of making certain that all the individual cells in the battery are at the same level. So let's go and take a look at how we do that. Paying attention to discharging and balancing your LiPo batteries can greatly increase their lifespan. Now, LiPo batteries will discharge during use. After all, that's the purpose of having the battery in the first place. However, the cells in the LiPo will not always discharge at the same rate. If you allow the battery to become unbalanced, it'll reduce its lifespan and it also wastes energy. 
The chart below shows how the cells in an 8-cell LiPo battery do not discharge at the same rate over time. The best way to keep the cells balanced in a LiPo is to monitor them during use. You certainly never want to allow the cells to drop below 3 volts. A great way of doing this is with an inexpensive monitor with an alarm. I showed you one of those a little earlier in the video. The capacity controller that I showed you early in the video can also balance the cells by discharging them until they all meet the same level as the lowest charged cell. Most good LiPo chargers also have a balancing function that you can use to keep your cells balanced. So let's go and see exactly how we do that. Now there are a number of different methods that you could employ to balance your LiPo batteries. Essentially what you are going to be doing is you are going to be finding out which of the cells in the battery has the lowest voltage level and then you're going to bleed off the charge on the other cells to match that level and you're going to do it through the battery monitor plug over here because this gives you a connection to each of the individual cells. Now when I charge the battery you'll notice that my battery charger had a function in order to balance the cells when it finished charging it went through for a little bit and balanced out the cells and it didn't really take very long now that's one way that you could balance your cells but when you're out in the field and you've already run your battery down a little bit it's nice to have another method of doing it and this little battery tester that I showed you a little bit earlier is also capable of balancing out your cells and I'll show you how you do it essentially first you have to of course connect the battery monitor to it and it's reading the cell voltage of three cell battery and everything and then what you need to do we can go through the mode and we can see the different cell voltages right now now they're all matched pretty close right now in this battery but what this mode tells us over here is that there's 0 0.009 volt maximum to minimum difference between two of my cells and it also mentions up at the top over here that it is the first cell and the third cell that are the most uh, the biggest difference between cells and so if I hit the type key and hold it down for a couple of seconds I heard that beep and then I'll leave it alone it is going to start to balance out the battery it's going to sit there and do it by itself and it's just basically applying a resistive load across the other cells in order to try to match it and you just leave it sitting there for a little while and it's going to cycle through and show you the voltage on the different cells and when the voltages match for all three cells then you know that your battery is balanced so that's just one other feature of this handy little tester and one of the many methods that you could use to balance the cells on a lipo battery now when you're not using your lipo batteries you should take them out of the device that you're powering up with them and you should put them into storage and putting a lipo battery into storage is a little more than just taking it out and putting it up on a shelf for one thing you may have a defect in the battery that you're not aware of either a manufacturing defect or maybe a puncture or something that happened while you were using the battery that you don't know about and something like this could cause the battery to vent gas or even to catch fire and you certainly wouldn't want this to happen if it was being stored in your home or your garage. Now in an ideal world you wouldn't store lipo batteries in your home. You would take them outside of your house. You'd have something like perhaps a storage shed and store them outside so if there was a problem it wouldn't cause a fire or a gas release inside your home. However for a lot of people myself included that isn't practical. For one thing the temperatures we experience outside here in the winter wouldn't make it possible for me to store lipos outside even if I was to build a shed for them. So let me show you a few ways that you can safely store a lipo battery indoors. There are both performance and safety considerations when storing a lipo battery. Lipo batteries should be placed into storage mode when they aren't being used. In storage mode, the cell voltage needs to be maintained between 3.8 and 3.85 volts per cell. You should never store a fully charged LiPo battery. In fact, if you have a fully charged LiPo battery and don't intend to use it within the next 24 hours, you should put it into storage mode. Ideally, LiPo battery should be stored between 10 and 50 degrees Celsius. Don't just put your LiPo batteries up on a shelf. 
you need to store these in a fireproof enclosure. If you're storing your LiPo batteries long term, such as over the winter, you should check them periodically and make sure that they are still at their correct storage mode voltage. There are many different methods of storing a LiPo battery and you'll find some great ideas up on YouTube and on the web. A very popular method of storing LiPos is to place them into LiPo bags. However, you should note that despite what they say, these bags are not truly fireproof. They can, however, be used as an additional fireproof measure when storing LiPos in a fireproof container. At the opposite extreme, there are storage enclosures that are made specifically for LiPo batteries. However, these are usually out of the reach of most experimenters and hobbyists. One very popular and very inexpensive method of storing LiPo batteries is to use a cinder block. You can place your LiPos inside the holes of the cinder block where they'll be encased by cement. You can even place the LiPos into battery bags for additional protection. Many people put a sheet of drywall or a sheet of steel on top of the cinder block to complete the fireproof enclosure. And so now let me show you a couple of methods that I use for storing my LiPo batteries. Now when you're looking into LiPo storage, you'll inevitably find a number of advertisements for LiPo bags, and I've got a few of them over here. Now these bags are made of materials that are supposed to be fireproof and explosion proof, and they're supposed to be a great way to contain your LiPo batteries. And they do have their uses, but I'll tell you something right now, those claims are rather grandiose. They certainly won't prevent a LiPo fire from spreading. Um, they don't really do a great job either of containing the gases or an explosion but they as I said do have uses now a couple of these bags have zippers on the top so you can zip them shut and they seem to be lined with a material which is again supposed to be fire retardant and they come in all kinds of sizes and you can just pop a few lipo batteries into them and in this case this one just uses velcro to seal itself up the other ones use zippers and they're not too bad for carrying lipo batteries what i use them for mostly is to put inside other fire retardant containers as sort of a, an additional measure of protection now this one over here you saw a little bit earlier i used this one when i did some battery charging and i like it because it's got this little opening on the side over here with velcro so you can put your battery in zip the top and then just have your charging leads coming out over here and contain the battery in that and it adds a small measure of protection while you're charging although as you'll also notice i had a fire extinguisher on hand so again these are a little bit overrated as to what they can really do but they still are handy to have around they're not very expensive and i suggest for transporting lipos and for charging lipos that you pick a few of these things up now a very popular method of storing and transporting lipo batteries is to use an ammo box and you can get these at uh, sporting supply stores you can also get them on amazon which is where i got this one and they come in a variety of sizes and they're really nice because they're made of very heavy duty steel so they will contain a fire now if you're going to use one of these boxes there's one important thing you need to do when you get it though when you first get the box there will be a rubber seal around here on the lid and the rubber seal is there to keep the box airtight and waterproof but for storage of lipos that's the last thing that you want because you don't want it airtight if the lipo happens to vent some gases you don't want the gases building up in here because if they ignite you've literally created yourself a bomb now i've got a battery bag inside here and uh, get another battery bag inside there with some lipo batteries in them and uh, I've got them stored into here and again this is a great way to transport lipos but you can also use it as a long-term storage container and they're not very expensive and they're certainly a step up from using just a battery bag so I would highly recommend that you pick up an ammo box and uh, modify the lid on it and use it for storage and transport of your own lipo batteries.
Now I wanted to show you the method that I use for storing my LiPo batteries and this is something I put together myself that you could easily put together as well. Now as you can see I've got a toolbox over here and the key thing about this toolbox is it is a steel toolbox and of course steel has excellent fire retardant properties and if you open it up you'll see I've got this little handle on this little piece of material. And what this material is, is it's drywall. Now drywall is sometimes called sheetrock in some parts of the world. And sheetrock actually pretty well describes what it is. It's a sheet of rock that's in between two pieces of paper. And of course this is used all over the world for home construction. And one of the reasons it's used is it has very good fire retardant properties. It has properties for what they call a one hour burn. So a fire should be able to burn for one hour and be retained by the drywall and one hour is plenty of time even for a lipo fire now if you look inside the box you'll see I've got a couple of battery bags and each bag currently has one battery in it although the bags are large enough to have more than one battery and the bags just offer a small additional bit of protection and if you look inside here you'll see that I've also lined the toolbox with drywall there's drywall on the bottom it's on the sides etc and so the back batteries will fit in there and then this goes on the top and it goes on rather loosely and that's intentional because you want to allow air to get out of here so if there is any outgassing from the batteries that uh, won't cause a problem because it'll have a place to go it won't build up pressure inside here and then you'll close the lid on this and it should be able to retain a fire now if you want the icing on the cake or the cherry on the top you could also place a bag of sand on top of this and with a bag of sand if the bag was plastic eventually the heat would melt it and the sand would come up if it was burlap it would probably burn and the uh, sand would come out and the sand would extinguish the lipo fire if anything managed to get out of the box and so I feel this is a pretty safe way of storing lipo batteries and you could put something like this together yourself quite easily now I really hope that you never need to put the next section of the video into practice, but it is something you always need to be prepared for. If you happen to have the misfortune of experiencing a lipo fire, you need to know how to extinguish that fire. And a lipo fire is different than other fires that you may be familiar with, especially because lithium is involved and lithium and water are not a good mix. Now if you don't believe me about the severity of lipo fires, stick around because I've got a few video clips of lipo fires that'll probably change your mind. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how you can properly extinguish a lipo fire. There are many situations that can cause a lipo battery to catch fire. A lipo battery can experience thermal runaway for several different reasons. Charging a lipo with an excessive internal resistance in its cells can cause this thermal runaway heat can build up and it can catch fire. Charging a damaged balloon or otherwise defective LiPo battery can cause it to catch fire as well. If you expose a LiPo battery to heat above 60 degrees Celsius, it can be enough to start this thermal runaway and catch fire. A LiPo battery exposed to excessive shock or pressure can catch fire. This is of particular concern with model aircraft where a crash can cause it to burst into flames. It's not just the flames that we need to worry about. The gas released during a LiPo fire can be toxic and if it's in an enclosed area and is ignited it can cause an explosion. Now despite their name, LiPos actually contain very little lithium. Now you'd normally need a very expensive and hard to obtain class D fire extinguisher for lithium. You don't require one for lipo batteries, as the lithium burn happens within the first few seconds of the fire. A common class ABC fire extinguisher, which I'm hoping you already have around your house, will work well for a lipo fire. Now you can use water during a lipo fire. It's best used around the area of the lipo to keep any combustible materials from catching fire. One excellent way of putting out a lipo fire is to douse it in sand. A bucket or a bag of sand can put out a lipo fire pretty quickly. 
Now, if you still don't believe me about the severity of lipo fires, I want you to take a look at a few of these videos. Now, all of these videos illustrate a lipo fire that occurred during the charging process, and a couple of them were obviously intentionally done just to illustrate the severity of a lipo fire. Note that in many of these videos, especially the one on the bottom left, you'll see a lot of outgassing. And the video on the top right illustrates how the lipo balloons before it catches fire. The quadcopter video illustrates the danger of charging a lipo battery while it's in the device. Not only has the battery been destroyed, but the quadcopter has also been destroyed as well. I do have the question the wisdom of starting some of these fires in a grassy area. So play it safe and make certain that you're ready to handle a lipo fire. Now all good things must come to an end, and that includes LiPo batteries. Like any other rechargeable battery, LiPo batteries have a limited number of charging and discharging cycles, and even if you've taken good care of your battery and you've balanced it and stored it properly, eventually there will come a time where the battery isn't holding a charge, or it isn't holding it for very long, or it isn't giving the power that it used to give, and you're going to have to get rid of that battery. Now disposing a LiPo battery is a little bit more than just tossing it into the garbage can because that battery still has some power left in it and you certainly don't want to be known as the person who set a garbage truck on fire. So there are a couple of methods you can use to completely discharge a lipo battery for storage and I'm going to go over a few of those methods right now. So how do you know when it's time to get rid of your lipo battery? Well, in general, a LiPo battery is good for approximately 350 to 500 charge and discharge cycles. However, if the battery is damaged or poorly maintained, its lifespan can be severely reduced. A really good indication of your battery's health is to measure its internal resistance and track the measurements. When it gets too high, you'll notice that the battery gets warm when it's getting charged, and it should be replaced. If your battery becomes ballooned or deformed in any way, it should definitely be disposed of. You also may want to dispose of your LiPo when the performance becomes poor, when it won't hold a charge, or when you're unable to balance the cells. Now before you dispose of your LiPo, it must be completely discharged. Some chargers, such as the one I showed you earlier, have a discharge or destroy function, and you can use this function to discharge the battery. Another method of discharging a LiPo is to use a tail light bulb with some wires connected to it. Connect this across the output of your LiPo, let it sit there, and completely drain. Now many experts recommend that after you've done this, you immerse the LiPo in a salt water bath for at least 24 hours. This will completely discharge the battery. Whatever method you use, you should take a voltmeter and ensure that the output is indeed zero volts before you dispose of the LiPo. Now how you dispose of your LiPo will really depend upon where you live, as disposal instructions are often dictated by your local laws or bylaws. In many communities, you're allowed to simply put discharged LiPos in your regular trash, as they don't really contain any lithium or dangerous materials. However, there are many areas in the world that have very strict bylaws concerning LiPo disposal. For example, the state of California requires that you take LiPo batteries to an authorized disposal center. It's always best to verify with your local authorities as to the proper method of disposing your LiPo battery. So that concludes our look at LiPo batteries. I hope you found it both enjoyable and educational. Now, if you want some more information about LiPos, you can check out the article that accompanies this video on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website. And there is a link to that article right below the video. Another thing you'll find on the website is some information about the project that I'm using LiPo batteries for, and that would be my Outdoor Rover project. And there are a number of articles and exclusive not 
on YouTube videos that you'll find on the website that let you know a bit more about the rover and you'll be seeing more and more of those. In order to stay informed about those, please sign up for my newsletter. Newsletter subscribers get advanced look at those articles and the newsletter is not spam by any means. It's just my way of letting you know what goes on in the workshop. It's free to join and all I need is your email address. Another thing that's free to join is a DroneBot workshop forum where you can discuss LiPo batteries, technology, and all sorts of things with a number of like-minded individuals. And it's also just a great community to hang around. And there's a link to the forum right below this video as well. And finally, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, well, please do. I'd really appreciate it. All you need to do is click on the subscribe button. And if you click that little bell notification, you will be notified every time that I make a new video. So until next time, please stay safe. Please take care out there. Please take care of your LiPo batteries. And I will see you again very soon here in the DroneBot Workshop. Goodbye for now. Bye.